Is that working? I think that it is. I think that we're live. I think that we are good. I thinks. He uh, thinks it's like a weasel. Right. Okay, so... We're streaming at 60 FPS. Oh, hello. Yay, there we go. Cool. Where you go. Um, I wanted to stop the other stream because that was specifically for that laptop and just start another more generalized stream for this stuff so, you know, it doesn't, like, get on top of it kind of thing. And you're not first, Postal Dude. You're not first. Hey, Wayne. Welcome. So I fished out a snares. This one works as well. It just needs... Well, I doesn't need a recap, but I can show you how that works. I'm happy to do that. Um, and we'll repair this later. So, I'm going to grab a little baggie, or something, just for these laptop screws, actually, so I don't get those confused with other crap. Oh, do 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 Hi, Mark. Welcome. So, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? You've probably seen me leaning over. I've got far too much in the way of junk everywhere. That's my problem. But you know what? This will do. Oh, I have found a baggie. So I'll just get these screws out of the way so I don't mix them up with SNES screws. Um, I recorded the locations anyway because they're all on the stream video, so that's fine. I'll get all these out of the way. And what I'll be doing with this one, I don't have any SMD caps, but I have plenty of radial caps through hole. So what I'll do is use through hole caps because there is no need, if you're neat and tidy, to use SMD aluminium electric electrolytics. You can get away with just standard old through hole. Have I got an audio glitch? I might have a bit of a, um, you might hear me fading in and out as I'm moving around because I have a studio condenser mic which is sort of where my hand is now. You can't see the mic but that's roughly where it is. And as I move around, um, yeah. Okay, this is actually missing a screw but that's fine. So we need this game bit driver. No. This game bit driver, no. Oh, it is this one. Okay. SNESs are the absolute worst consoles to diagnose as well. They are an absolute terror. Because what happens is they, they end up with subtle CPU failures sometimes where the CPU kind of works but kind of doesn't. And um, you'll get a black screen and you'll be looking around the board for faults. You know, you'll be checking like the shorts to ground, you'll be looking for components getting too hot, that kind of thing, and you won't have a short to ground, nothing will be getting hot because you don't have any shorts, so you'll be like, okay, so what's the issue then, has something gone open line, are the caps bad, something like that, and you can switch out all the caps and test each individual component, and the whole thing will be like hunky-dory, it'll be like, no, I'm an, I'm an okay snares in 100% good healthy condition, but it's not. Yeah, the test carts are handy to have, yeah. I actually use... Um, an SD to SNES clone and I have a bunch of test programs on there. It's a bit better than a test car in some ways because I use tests designed to test the accuracy of emulators which can detect very subtle failures on these CPUs that other things can't which is kind of interesting. There we go. So, pop that. You know, I've spent so many hours, so many hours on Super Nintendos. They are one of the most 
ridiculous consoles in terms of failures. Hi Jaden. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, Jaden, once you've got your um once you've got your focusing bracket for your scope, DM me again and uh, I'll sort you out with um an adapter. Going into lurker mode, heading to Andromeda for some space adventure in GL on resurrecting Skynet. Thank you kindly, good sir. Enjoy your... What game would that be? I don't know. Bind Xylex, how are you doing? Not too bad, Bind, not too bad. Am I saying that right? Bind Xylex, Bane Xylex. Bind... Zane. I don't know. Oh, Mass Effect. Okay, right, okay. Enjoy Mass Effect. Need to get the legendary edition of that, actually. This thing actually has a whole dust bunny in it. Bean Xylex. Hi Nige. Welcome. Welcome. Our cartridge slot's looking pretty good actually, considering. Yeah, we got dust bunnies. <laughs> Let's get zoomed in a bit. There we go. So yeah, you know, opening snares, not much to it. It's way easier than opening a laptop. couple of screws around the RF housing now and that should be it. One on the PCB, one on the uh, 7805 voltage regulator and that will get everything apart. So we'll put that there. I'll have this recapped in absolutely no time. I'll show you how to do this like a pro. <laughs> There's actually nothing wrong with it, Adelator. This is a request. This snares in particular, oh, well, there is something wrong with it, but not not electrically. Um, the only thing wrong with it is it has a shattered housing. Now, I am actually going to be listing this on eBay at some point, but I do need to retro-bright the cases because they're all pretty bad. You have no audio. Image is perfect. No, it could actually be the sound chip. Those do fail. Those do fail, it might not be your caps, it might be the sound chip. If you need one, if you need a sound chip, I have some going spare actually from... In fact, I have a whole load of them because I've got a load of dead snazzes. So, if you want the sound chip, let me know. But you can try your caps first, and see what that gets you. You never know, it might do the job. Now... You can test caps in the circuit. You can do that. Yeah, the old shells are very brittle. Be a video, so I want to have all I might need. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, what you want to do, Wayne, is just filming bits, right? You don't have to do it all at once. It doesn't have to be one session. I've done that with a few things. A few times, actually. Ooh, you're doing the Game Gear. Yeah, that, the Game Gears are pretty fun to recap, and they really do, uh, because they nearly always have, like, massive cap leakage, they're a pretty good way to learn how to deal with um, any issues around that. So, there we go. We're in. We have the bare PCB. So, recapping, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight caps. So it's a pretty small job, actually, on these. So what do we need? We need a 2.250 volts. Uh, we need 33 at 25 volts. Two of those. 10 volts. Uh, no, 10 microfarad, 50 volts, I think. 10 at 50, yeah, 10 at 50, 10 at 50, okay, oh, and there's one over here, 47, right, so, 
Let's get the caps. So I have my uh, box of caps. My box of many, many caps. So we need a 2.2 at 50. Those are 2.2 at 50. So let's grab one of these. We'll get one of the, we'll install one of these first. Why not? Oh, I know, Adelator, I know, I know. You won't rip the pads though. You won't rip them if you're careful. They're actually surprisingly durable pads. I've got quite a few videos of Game Gears on this channel, if you're curious. But yeah, you gotta be careful-ish. You gotta be careful-ish, because it is sort of easy to do damage if you're not super duper careful. Might do this under the scope so you can see a little better as well. I don't need to, but let's do that. Let's head on over to the microscope. Hacha, here we go. And there's our uh, unwitting victim. Got a bit of dirt around it as well. There we go. Retro 6, I uh, never watched his stuff actually. Um, that would be Luke, right? I know of him, and I know of his stuff, but I don't really not that much into their stuff. Let's clean away that debris there. There we go. Right, so I'm going to run my hot air at about 400C, 70% airflow, and I'm going to hope I don't popcorn my board. A lot of his uh, buttons and things like that aren't so great, but, you know, considering there's not many people offering services like what he has. Okay, that's that cap off. Clean it up, clean the area up. And for that, I'm doing the usuals, just a bit of desolder wick, wick off the old solder, put new stuff on. The recapping. So polarization of this negative on the right hand side on this particular cap. Um, if you look at the outline as well of the original capacitor here, you can see it's got an odd shape. Oh, I better believe I might be getting messaged. Um, I'll have to check that in a second. But yeah, so looking at the cap, you can see stripes on the right hand side it's exactly the same as normal aluminium electric through hole caps stripe is on the side of the negative so you can see here we've got a negative and that is the stripe you'll have to give me a minute i think that might be my fiance i think she's uh, messaging me that would be my guess i'll have a look in a moment but yeah this is kind of a biggish cap. You got to make sure you got some clearance on the top of it. Uh, Snes needs 60 hertz switch. Doesn't need it. I mean, it's a nice to have. So what I do is I like to uh, snip these caps like that, and then sort of bend them out so that the legs are a bit flat. 
Let me just do that. There we go. So I've snipped it and then I want to bend it. You can bend it with a pair of pliers. That's one way to do it. You can also bend these with tweezers if you've got some reasonably heavy duty ones, but mine are all very precision tweezers and I don't really want to wreck my tweezers. So yeah, just use pliers. So you just grip the end like that and then bend it so it's sort of flat like that and then you do the same again bend it so it's sort of flat and that's it now people have different ideas on whether you should do it this way the way I'm doing it right now I personally don't see a problem with it some do some don't but electrically speaking there's no difference at all so I shall just get this capacitor in. In fact, what I'll do is I'll apply solder to one pad. This is one way to do it. You put a bit of solder on the pad, just like that. And then you come in holding the capacitor leg like that. Place it on top of the solder and then heat the leg and the solder at the same time. And then you come off like that. That's not a good joint though. No. Let's try that again. That's not so great either. That's going to need a bit of flux in a minute, but there we go. That is a kind of joint. You can probably see that leg is sort of floating in the air a bit on this part. So I'm just going to push down on the tweezers and bend it a little bit. You won't get it perfectly, but the solder itself will make a connection. So we just come in again now, like this. There we go. And then I'll just blob a little bit of flux down because the other side is a bit dry. There we go. One cap done. And then, you know, you, you, you can bend it down a bit. This one's a little bit in the air. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to check the clearance of that because I'm not 100% sure that's going to clear. So if I was to put that around there. sure how great that clearance is. I'm going to bend the cap a little bit down like that. What you've got to be aware of as well is you're right next to the SNES's CPU there. So don't... If your cap's not surrounded with like an insulator like this one is, don't bend it all the way down onto the pins of the CPU because you're just going to short them all out. I'll bend that down a little bit now. That should be reasonably flat now. And that is, that's not rocking about anymore, it's not floating on the cap, we're good. <clears throat> right, now just give me a moment, I just want to see uh, who I was being messaged by. I'm fairly sure it's my fiancée, I hope, hope, hope it is. Let's find out. Let's find out. the straightforward right I mean it's a little bit uh, different when you're replacing SMDs with THD ones but there you know. right so we're after let's see this cap is 33 microfarad at 25 volts so that's what we're after and this come on glove 33 I said to be right I did so 
I have a massive disorganized box of caps, so I'm just rummaging through them. What do we have? We have 16 volts at 10 microfarad, 35 at 4.7. No, that's not what I need. 68 micro. No. 100. No. 33 at 6.3. Is that what I'm after? No, 33 at 25, isn't it? Okay. 100 at 6.3. 33 at 25 volts. Is that what I said, I think? Yes. Okay, great. So I've got the caps I need. You can see in the bottom left what I'm up to because they come on these big real tape things, tape reels, tape reels. Where's my snips? Where's my snippety snips? There they are. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it probably will end up in its length, um, to be fair, Wayne. Like, these things... Snezzes in particular, when they have faults, they can be an absolute bugger to get to the bottom of. So, 2, 2, 33. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 all at 50 volts and 47. Okay, so I only need two 33 caps. Cool. So... In the spirit of recapping, get these caps off. Oh, yeah, mistakes are common, we all make them. You know, I make mistakes all the time. And sometimes you just spend hours and hours and hours learning about things. I mean, I've learned recently how how to use an oscilloscope. And, you know, I spent hours and hours and hours watching uh, EEV blog and, you know, him explaining oscilloscopes, how they work, what you use them for, why you'd use them, you know. Just one of those. Right, so... What I'm going to do is bend the legs apart. Like that. And uh, solder it in. Like that. Straight up right. So right, let's snip these legs a bit. To be fair, Jaden, these caps generally don't fail. I've not actually had a SNES where they failed in. Um, even NESs, I haven't really seen them fail in those. I generally replace them anyway because they will dry out eventually, you know. Old electronics and all that.
having to ease this because my hands are getting in the way. Can't see. So again, the positive side is the angled side on the board because obviously it doesn't show polarity. I'm really struggling here. There we go. Right. And then we just come in with the iron. Boom. That's it. That's one done. So I said the metal ones are better than the ones you're replacing them with. Are you talking about on Game Gears by any chance? Um, are you talking about like what I'm doing right now? Maybe I'm. Let me let me check the chat. I've not really checked the chat well enough. I'm I'm a bit behind. I thought the metal caps are meant to be better and not fail. Yeah, yeah, g generally. Um, finally got here again. Hello, Luke. Um, Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so what Luke said is right. People replace SMD electrolytes, so surface mount electrolytes, like what we've just seen me do. They'll replace them with tantalums, and that's perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Tantalums will basically last forever. They're solid state capacitors too, so they won't dry out like electrolytics these will eventually dry out probably not for decades but they will one way or another eventually time will get them tantalums will last much 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 longer just by virtue of the fact that you know they're solid state caps i bought a finercy 1014 d 130 pound great for what i do oh nice nice sounds like a reasonable deal that huh? Never used Finercy stuff. I don't even know if I'm saying their name right. I've never used their stuff, but um, some people say they're good. I have a cheapo Hantec, which I'm. It's okay, but I'd rather have a Rigol or a Siglent. Yeah, the thing about tantalums, um, they're not a different pair of tweezers. They're not a universal uh, cap you can cap type that you can just use with anything, right? You know, they, they they won't work for absolutely everything because they won't always have the right capacitance. But they're pretty good in a lot of applications. I know, I know that the um, the classic Mac community loves them. Finest work right now. Let's change orientation. Right, that is absolutely horrible, but we can fix that. And look, we've got the board's only uh, through-hole cap. And what's interesting is we've also got a uh, non-polarized cap as well nearby. I don't think we can see it on the camera yet, but I'll show you. And this 
non-polarizing cap right here was actually done, I believe, after a recall. On the initial uh, snares, is, and you'll notice it's a different type of cap. You know, this is uh, this is like the ones I'm soldering on now. But they switched them out for non-polarized ones, and you can see there's no stripe on this cap. This was a common uh, thing the factories did. Yeah, exactly, Micro. They're a good upgrade in some situations, but yeah, you know, you get, you get, people don't take into account things like ESR and things like that, you know. Equivalent series resistance, for those that don't know. This is a 10 microfarad at 50 volts, and we've got the negative facing toward us. So, let's find one of those bad boys. No. 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 But I probably do need one of these big bad boys in a moment. So I said 10 at something, didn't I? 10 at 25? No, 10 at 50, okay. Come on, I know I've got some. Yeah, that's one microfarad. Twenty-five volts of a hundred. Come on, I must have some. Sure I do. Bolts. I could have swore I had a load of these. Where are they? You'll have to excuse me, folks. I got a giant, massive bag, well, massive box of caps, and like, I just sort of have to work my way through them. You know, a bit like mining for ore, and mining for capacitors. How I mine for caps. No, 2.2 at 50, no. But what you made me do, Wayne. No. do a wane in a minute and uh, get down on my hands and knees and see if there's any under this desk because I think I do have another strip somewhere. Or maybe not, they're right here. What are these? 6.3 volt. Okay, that's not the right one. Actually, I don't think I have any replacement caps for this. 10 microfarad at 50. I could have swore I had a load of them. But... So I got 10 at 25. 2.2 at 50, 0.47, 22, 100 at 25, that's not what I'm after, 47, I do need one of them for this job, 22, 35, 16 volts at 10, but that's not what I'm after either. 820 microfarads. This is a beefy cap as well. Uh, 250 volts at nowhere near the capacitance. 16 volts at 10 microfarads. That's definitely 50. I'm not blind, right? Yeah. We're all noobs, aiding and abetting, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, well. Oh, well. Lands and caps. No. No. Oh, come on. No. What are you? Ten microfarad at thirty five volts. That's not right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a cotton picking minute. I remembered something. I 3D printed this to hold caps. What we got? Oh, 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 I think I just found the caps I was looking for. 10 microfarad at 50 volts. Yes, I did. Right. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's do those. Right. You know what? I just emptied out my whole toolbox full of capacitors and you know what it was just right there in like the one place that I'd actually organized stuff classic absolute classic all right anyway so negative spacing toward us so let's bend these legs Trim them back a bit. There we go, we got it off, and oh, oh, thank you very much, Jaden. Much appreciated. Thank you for the super sticker, I believe. I don't think I've ever actually seen a super sticker used, but thank you very much. But there we go, we got that cap off. <laughs> I'm scared, I'm scared of you, uh, yeah, yeah. Not practicing what I'm preaching either. I haven't got my fume extractor on at the minute. <laughs> really should have. Hey ho. I believe that Jaden is the very first person to super something on the uh, channel, so you get the honor, Jaden. Congratulations. Yeah, good ones are expensive, Jaden. You're right about that. It's not something you should really cheap on, though. Like, you can cheap on a lot of stuff, but when it comes to safety, you probably shouldn't, right? He says as he's inhaling flux. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Time to get another one up. <laughs> Left a leg behind on that one. Oh, 
Yeah, channel membership's turned on. Should be. I did it earlier today, actually. You should be able to join if you want to. Yeah, I did. I did some uh, custom emotes and stuff earlier, um, and custom length of time icons, which I actually the, the length of time icons I made myself. I actually drew them uh, pixel art. That was kind of fun to do. Oh, I could have swore I did enable it. I don't know. I don't know. Could have swore I did though. Do do let's get these cappy legs sorted out. Sweet. So the one cap I'm not swapping is this one here. This uh non polarized cap. And that's just because I don't have any non-polarized caps around, so... Welcome to the 8-Bit Supporters, Wayne! <laughs> hey! Enjoy the emotes. Yep. I drew that, Nez. I drew all of those. And they change as time goes on. You can get a Game Gear next to your name, you can get a Sega Mega Drive next to your name, you can get a PlayStation 1. <laughs> it's actually kind of tough to see that that's a NES, isn't it? I can't really see it very well from where I'm at, so... Well, there we go. Let's pop these caps off. Take them both off while I'm at it. Surprise! You can see the you can see the membership benefits. It tells you when you sign up. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining up, Wayne. Thanks for joining up. But yeah, I only activated that today. Welcome, Jinxie. Hey, welcome to the Eight Bit Supporters. Where you can play classic games like Super Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog 1. Which is also a really good game. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, look at... We're going alright. We're making progress here. We're not that far off from recapped. Hey, thank you, Jaden. Go easy though, folks. You don't need to do that. <laughs> but much appreciated, Jaden, nonetheless. Thank you very much. Yeah, to be fair, Wayne, that's exactly why I support people too. I don't really care about the benefits. Oh, God, I hate... 
Come on, legs. Bend. Bend. Right, there we go. More or less. Bashing the lighting setup now for my scope. Classic. Go with the other cap. I'll trim that one up in a minute. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, signing up. And you know what, like, I know quite a few of you, you've been watching me for a while now, and, you know, I, I just appreciate everybody that comes along, everybody that joins the chat, everybody that just, yeah, makes it happen. It's awesome. Oh, it was quite funny yesterday, I was on, um... I was on EEV Blog 2, which is where Dave from EEV Blog does his live stream stuff. <laughs> and uh, I sent him a little super chat. And he goes and brings up my channel, and I'm like, oh god, now I feel embarrassed. <laughs> but yeah, Dave's a good bloke, he really is. go there we go very nice I think howdy Adam howdy Luke Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. So the recapping continues. I actually have a ton of recapping to do on Game Gears. I've got a whole stack of Game Gears that are all just waiting for caps. And I've just never really gotten around to doing it. Right, what do we got next? We got a 47 microfarad at 16 volt, and that is down here. Here. I have an ancient apple power button that's in dire need of a resto job. Yeah, why not? You know, um, yeah. I actually watch um, Bruce Brank uh, Brankus Creations, and uh, he does a lot of not MacBooks, but he does a lot of like the Apple Classics, the SEs, things like that. He's really good to watch. I mean, I'm not huge into Apple Macs as such, like the old ones, but he's still really interesting to watch, and he's uh, he's pretty good. Wink. 
So you can see, looking at these pads, by the way, that there's like no electrolytical juices anywhere or anything like that. You get uneasy. Da, 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 da. Sorry, right. Let me let me let me pay attention to what's going on in chat. Let's have a look. Who shiny emote I have next to my neck? Oh, hey, welcome, Jinxie. Yeah, you've got a uh, you have a NES next to your name there. I'm not sure how well it shows, uh, but yeah, that's a Nintendo. Um. Okay, so EV Blog is a great channel. Yeah, it really is. Dave's fantastic. He has. He has real enthusiasm behind what he does, and it shows. It shows in like every video he makes. So yeah, um, Adam Smith. Hello, Wayne's new prepares. Hello, Adam as well. Uh, Death Bomb. I actually subscribed to Death Bomb. Uh, Death Bomb's an English bloke, I think. I'd like to upload more videos about me repairing things, but I get uneasy when soldering on camera. I can swap a motherboard no problem. Just go for it. Honestly, just go for it. The worst you'll do is make a mistake, and most people aren't judging you for that. That's even better. That is right. Oh, no, no, no. I don't need that. I need to do it. Right, what was that cap? 47 at something, wasn't it? 16. Yay! Found it straight away. Hey! <laughs> I like not having to rummage. Hey, Joe said it's true. Welcome. Yeah, things are going okay. Things are going okay. Yeah, don't be too uneasy about soldering on a webcam, like on a camera. It's not. I wouldn't worry about it. I know it can be a bit stressful, but once you've done it a couple of times, you realise it's not that stressful. What stresses me is doing demos at work. It's like I do software for a day job, you know, and sometimes we we have to demo our work to stakeholders. Now that makes me nervous. That makes me real nervous. But I think the difference is, when you're doing it in front of a, in front of a live crowd that you can see and hear, that makes you a bit more nervous than, than um, when you're doing it like I'm doing it right now. Because like obviously I can interact with you folks, I can see what you're writing on chat and stuff. But like, I don't know. It's entirely a mental thing, I think as well. It's entirely a block, entirely nervousness, anxiousness that people get when basically. For lack of a better word, you know, like putting on a public performance, right? Because you kind of are. That's exactly what you are doing, really. So, yeah, some people do get nervous. It's understandable. But if you actually, you know, try it and go for it, it's not so bad. There we go. So that's all the smaller caps. We've just got this big beefy one here. What's this? 2200, yeah, 2200 microfads, 25 volts. Well, guess what I happen to have? I happen to have those beef cakes. Ha, <laughs> nice road warrior. Awesome. You know, that's how you start, right? You start small and you go big. Covered my BBC Mongrels wallpaper from the system and now just need to reformat the C drive. Right, cool. Oh, you've got a troll switch, have you, Jinxie? Yeah, that happens from time to time, right? It does happen. Right, so what we got to do is desolder this beefcake. Now, actually, um, Wayne. If you're still with us, if you are still with us, Wayne, I would like to show you the correct way to use a desoldering gun to avoid damaging traces.
And I can demonstrate it on this SNES. But first, I do need to plug in the uh, desolder gun. So bear with me. Right, so, what I like to do with this is you find the back of your cap, your desolder, and in my case, that's uh, right here, you can see where my finger is. Those are the legs for the cap we're taking. Now, I should probably discharge this cap, because, you know, I used it the other day. There we go. Now she's discharged. I assume you saw the nice sparks there, too. Not the safest way to just charge a cap, but whatever. Anyway, so what we're going to do is apply fresh solder and just blob a load of solder onto these points. So I'll get that under the scope and show you what I mean. We want to flood it. Helps if I can show. Helps if I show you on the microscope. So we want to flood it. Go you know, blob a load on. Blob a load on. The reason we're blobbing a load on like that is because it helps create a seal around the nozzle of the desoldering gun, which gives you know it gives it a bit more to desolder with. Yeah, that is switched on. Okay. Okay. So I'm just waiting on the desoldering gun to heat up, so... Also, lower temp solder added to higher temp solder to make it flow. Yeah, that's true as well, Adam. That's true as well. But this board in particular already has leaded solder. So in this instance, it doesn't make much difference. But it's actually, actually, yeah, you are quite right. Like if you're working on, um, if you're working on, for example, Xbox controllers or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Mix in a bit of leaded. Like just a drop or two on each joint. How are we doing on the desolder gun? Are you up to temperature? I think you are. Right, Wayne. I'm going to try and show this as best I can. So I'm probably going to have to do it on this angle like this, but... So well, you can see what I'm doing. I'm coming in with a nozzle. I'm going to clean the nozzle, actually. One sec. It's like cleaning the solder and iron, really. Oh, that's not so great. Let's try that again. Still not so great. Come on. Yeah, whatever. Right, anyway, so. You come in. You heat the joint. Like this. Best you can. Now, this leg's been bent over. I can tell by the feel. But you want to orbit around a bit like that. And then. That's not as well as I'd liked. And you do the same again. Now these are going to need unbending a bit. Mm. 
when your legs of the capsule, whatever it is you desolder and aren't bent, this isn't so much of a problem. But this one, yeah. Eh. So what I'm gonna do is re-add solder to that now. And do it again. So you orbit around like this, get a good bit of heat in there, keep orbiting, and pull the trigger. And keep holding the trigger until you're off the leg. I exaggerated the amount of time that takes, but yeah. And I'll do it again now, like the way I would normally do it. should pop right off. So if you have a look you can see those legs are free and all I have to do is pull it through. That's it, desoldered. That's how you do it without wrecking the pads too. See those pads are perfect, right? Oh, there is a negative stripe on this, okay. Funny thing is, I'm actually watching this on OBS now. I'm not even using my scope. Maybe I should use my scope. Okay, now I got a new beefcake cap on there. That's it, this, this snares has been recapped now. Let's see if it works. Should do. If it doesn't work, I've broken it, so. <laughs> Let's find out. I'm not that sure that it's plugged in. Let's find out. Yep. Okay, let's connect it up. So I need an RGB cable. I need a game.
And there we go. It has booted up. Um, test ROM. Let's go with the burning test cartridge. So what's this thing you haven't? Can I have a look at it? Right, what's what's everybody talking about? Anyway, I'm going to let that run. Actually, I'm going to sort out this capture card as well because there's no audio. Drive stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, DM me, DM me on Discord or Facebook, and I'll uh, I'll link you to what I use. <coughs> Not a problem, but I'll show you. Um, I'll show you the proper testing suite now. I'm just gonna kill that. Uh, Joe said it's true. Well, I mean, you could gut an open source scan converter and stuff it in the shell. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you could mod it. It'd have to be an external board, and you'd have to uh, basically probably remove the multi out and stuff. You could do it. You could do it. Uh, no. Ah, CPU tests. That's what we want. Okay, so that's all good. So let's add with carry instruction done. Are you seeing this is just a and operation? And with memory, okay, good. That passes. Great. Add and shift left maybe. So what I'm doing now is I'm testing each individual instruction that the CPU is capable of running using these tests. These tests are designed to test uh, how accurate emulators emulate a, a real SNES, but obviously because they're testing accuracy, they will also test a real SNES, which is precisely what I'm doing right now. I'm testing a real SNES with all of these instructions. These can find subtle faults with a SNES system that uh, the actual official Nintendo burn-in test can't find, which is why I like to use these. It's a little bit laborious because you've got to load each one and you know so on. So that was a branch instruction. Nice. You might notice as well, if, if you know a little bit about uh, computer programming, what you're actually seeing here is um, assembly code instructions. They're assembly operators. So that's a compare with memory. I've had this particular test fail on a SNES CPU and every other test pass. So the CPU was sort of partially functioning. It's in the trash now because it was dead, but you know. Very easy to find subtle faults. Cool. <laughs> I am the program. I am. I am literally the program for running all here. <laughs> it's 
So that's increment. Anyway, I'm, I know this SNES is good. Let's do something more interesting. Let's do something more interesting. So what have we got? We've got duh, 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 Europe PAL 50 hertz. Boom. Let's take a look. California games too? Yeah, sure. Why not? There we go, we're riding, riding, riding. Imagineer. Enter your name. down <laughs> so yeah you know that's a recap that's a snares recap a recap doesn't really tend to fix snares though in my experience not unless it's legitimately a capacitor failure somewhere on the board which can happen but you know let's discharge the gaps The other thing as well is I don't like running SNESes for very long when they're um, not hooked up to the heatsink because these voltage regulators, they get super toasty. But yes, if anybody wants to purchase a recap SNES, you know, I do need to retro buy a shell for the poor thing. But yeah. I picked um I picked this up on eBay the other day actually. There we go. Yeah, a few days back. Um actually it looks like somebody's already had a go at this because this looks uh I don't know if you can see it. But it looks like there's been flux on the bottom of the cartridge slot. Not sure if that can focus. Yeah, you can see that. Not so great. But there we go. So, yeah, that needs a new shell. But finding a working CPU on a SNES is kind of tough. It really is. It's genuinely quite hard. Now, next up. This one, no power, doesn't switch on, so I'm not even going to bother trying to test it. I'm going to crack it open first. It's only six screws after all. I don't know what's wrong with it, but if I had to guess, I'd say fuse on the power supply. That would be the easiest fault with this thing. So let's find out. What is this? SEPH double five oh two. Oh, okay. Nice, 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 nice. fuse isn't even installed. Well, no wonder it didn't work. 
I know you, I don't know if folks saw that, but that, that fuse was in the air. <laughs> Let's test it anyway. Oh, I think it's dead. Yep, dead fuse. Okay. I what amperage that should be. 1.6. Okay. Yeah, this one looks like it's a super easy fix. One second, I'll be right back. I'm just grabbing a fuse. fuse is a bit beefy actually but it's probably the best I can do it's a 3 amp fuse a little bit big actually isn't it hmm it's a tad large fine. Right. I'll plug it in and see if it goes bang. But why did the fuse blow? Nothing obvious. Okay. Oh, yeah, while I'm at it, you can probably see right here, there's no spindle, so... We got no spindle. Or do we? Picked up another off of eBay. So what I need for that is a little PCB. And you'll see why in a moment. Um, I got to thinking the other day, I think it was uh, Computer Booter, David, but like, I'm pretty sure Phil has had problems with this too, and it gave me an idea. Talking about um, cooling down processes and so on, like on consoles when, when they're apart, and I'm thinking, maybe you could just use these copper plates as a sort of shim, put that down and it'll act as a sort of small heat sink. But the reason I'm using this is to uh, get the spacing right because these are about the right thickness for the spindle's distance.
looks about right. Hello, Remus. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, no problem, Wayne. No problem on that. So let's see if this no power PlayStation will work. So, shoo, I need power. I need power. Fortunately, I have some right here somewhere. Oh, that went bang. I saw that. I saw a spark there. You see that spark? I wonder if it killed the fuse. Let's find out. Oh, I smell that. Oh, magic smoke. And the fuse went. Interesting. Interesting. Is it the fuse I can smell? I don't know. <laughs> I literally do not know. Hmm. Yeah, we do know the fuse is doing its job. There is that. It makes you think what what caused it. I'm a little wary. Oh yeah, that really burn up. That really burn up. I'm not sure if you see it. That oxidized. Okay, let's take this out and have a look at it. Okay, there's nothing burned on the board. Yeah, toasty. So there's nothing burned on the board, but something gone bad. What could it be? So that's the AC side. That's our DC side, I believe. You can tell by the separation there. And then we've got what? Coil. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I'm a glutton for punishment. Let's blow another fuse. Oh yeah, I should do that, Carl Thor. I'll do that in a second. <clears throat> 47 microfarad at 400 volts. Nice.
basically nothing. I'm also not in resistance mode. What's going on with that? One second. There we go. Yep, cap's empty. <coughs> so what's going on then? So we got the fuse here. I assume those are bridge rectifiers. Let's put it in diode mode. Interesting. Makes me wonder what's going on on this board. Anyway. When in doubt, I swear I just, oh I did. I brought fuses over. Get your teeth in there. Yeah, I just have a good gnash on it. The gnashing of teeth. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. He wants to see another fuse pop. What was that that went? Was that a high voltage cap? Nice. That was kind of fun, if dangerous. <laughs> yeah, there's something gone in there. I am not even going to bother messing with this thing. Yeah, I think it is the bridge rectifier. <laughs> what a bang though what a bang yeah it did it looked like something um, it looked like the blue high voltage cap didn't it the crazy thing is I'm looking at it I don't see any any damage from that I don't see any burn marks nothing right how weird how very odd Oh, Angela, I did that on purpose. It was because I was previously working on a laptop and I didn't want to keep that stream going with the laptop because it had all the laptop imagery, the title, 
so on, so on, right? I just wanted to move on from that, and here we are, right? Let's see if this still works. Well, fuse didn't go. We got a nice bang. Spark came from the diode. Pretty close to the dual diode in the heatsink. Yeah, I think I see it. I'd have to rewatch that to actually see it properly, right? Because I was looking, I was looking at this. But yeah, I think you're right. I think the rectifier went. It's not like I have a replacement though, so there's not much point in me carrying on with this power supply at least. But I might try. Um, I might borrow one for a moment from another PlayStation. So let's do that. Uh, do, 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 do. Not that one. I shall be back in just a moment because I'm going to grab another PlayStation and we're going to try to power supply out of that and see if this thing's working. So back in a second. Jet bridge rectifier. Three pins AC, two pins DC, right. You don't have to delete your comment. This is my precious. <laughs> Actually, I'm quite looking forward to uh, re-watching this stream myself just for the bang. <laughs> Should I have a box for donor boards? You probably, if you've got the space for it. Yeah. The more organization, the better. You know, it's usually the case with these kind of things. Yeah, you did miss a bang. It was fun. I can only assume that um, <clears throat> these power supplies are actually compatible with each other. They might not be. Maybe they are. Maybe they are. <coughs> oh, I love a good board explosion.
Yeah, I, just, I think you're right, Joe. Actually, where are we looking? So we're looking. I'm a bit paranoid about how I hold this board, but um, let's take a look. So what do we have? We have a diode there by the cat. We have an extra diode there. We have a little Xena there. A couple of diodes up there. High voltage. No heat sink for that. Which is also kind of interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. Right. You never know, this one might work. Um, if this one goes bang as well, it'd be blowing up my own power supply. That would be a bit, uh, that would sadden my day a bit. <clears throat> now, I won't be streaming for too much longer. Don't go bang. It did not go bang. Hey. Okay. Awesome. The one that popped is between the V-reg and the cool underneath the regulator screw. Oh, right, right. I think I know the one you're talking about, actually. Let me get it in shot real quick. Are you talking about... Let's see if I can point to it. This one. You're talking about that one there. I think you are, aren't you? So we've got the coil, we've got the regulator, and we've got this diode here, and it does look a funny colour. And actually... Oh no, it's nothing. I was thinking there was a burn on this, but there's not. It, there's no burn. Well, I'll check that in a minute. I don't want to check it right now. What I want to check right now is if this thing even works. So. Yeah, they are different. They are different. One's an SCPH seven five five two, something like that. SCPH seven five oh two. I forget. And the other one's a five five something something. I forget. I'll say.
that's not working. Okay. I have seen this problem before. And it should be fixable. I simply doing that. No. So, that can mean a few things. It could mean the laser needs calibrating. It probably need, it probably does to be fair. We'll reseat things first. I do like calibrating lasers. Hey, daddy -o. Hey, daddy -o. Bear with me, folks, just one second. I'm just going to take a short break, actually. I won't be long.
I am back. I might have to bust out the big guns for this one. Um, I need a control pad. I need an audio CE and what else do I need? Control pad, audio CD. I need my oscilloscope. No, no, no poos, no poos. Just this. <laughs> I can't poo that fast. Control pad. So get that hooked up. Spins freely, so that's okay. I don't own any actual music CDs, so, hello Frozerinos, so, I'm going to use a Sega Saturn game, because they do have audio tracks like a regular music disc, so, hey ho. Oh my god, what is going on there? Okay. Yeah, it's just gonna it's just gonna do that little acceleration on the motor briefly. Well let's try the obvious. Let's try the obvious. Something I didn't try yet. And I should have tried first. I know that the PlayStation does read some security information first. And looking at it, that laser diode is all the way down. Could be the actuators failed. Hey Normski! You never saw the laser lightning up when I first powered it up. Um, hmm. Maybe it didn't. It does actuate up and down. Try it again. What I'm going to do is actually um, look at the laser module up close. Because everything is cool with lasers. Not having much success today, really. You know, that laptop, um, pretty sure it needs a new. BIOS, and the only way to get a new BIOS on that thing is probably lifting the chip and putting it in a programmer. And then we got this one, which has got a Duff power supply and probably a Duff laser assembly as well. 
Sled feels a bit seized as well. I think it might be the diode. I think it might be the diode on this. Actually, that's a good point. That is a good point. That can be checked. That can be checked. <clears throat> I can check it with the oscilloscope, you see. Which I may well just do. So. Getting this back together. Hold up. Hold up. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I just spotted something. Oh, don't do this to me now. You microscope. There we go. Gosh darn it. Right. Uh, there we are. Right, okay. You see what I saw? We got corrosion. Look at that. I don't think it's the sled runners that are the reason it's not working though. I think it's entirely this let's get some scraping action going on shall we I have somewhere in my local vicinity I will look to my left because that's normally what uh, Micro Mage tells me. Um, and it is not there. But I normally have a scalpel. I did open a box with that earlier. Just give me a second. I'm going on an adventure for a scalpel. Absolutely, Jaden. I will be getting wire for this one.
wonder if I can melt this. Hmm. Hmm. Where's my brass brush? Maybe that'll be better. No. Oddly satisfying content right here. Why, thank you. Thank you kindly. I actually don't think that continuity is broken on this, so I think it's actually okay. Looking at that, scraping it back. I don't know. Doesn't look too smart though, does it? Definitely a bit corroded though. Definitely. It's not corroded through. So I don't think that's the cause of the problem. No, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay, it's not that then. I mean, it didn't look great, but there we go. No, you never mind. Never mind. guess we could check the switch here. I doubt there's anything wrong with it, but you never know. <clears throat> and that switch right there. Yep, that switch is good. Ooh. 
We've got a laser power adjustment pot there. Question is, what resistance do we get over that? Minded in that. Right, 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 right. Sorry, I was fiddling around with my microscope's lighting there. It's a bit pitted, but it's okay, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. I'll try it again. See, my brain's seizing up now. I'm thinking, ha, huh, what should I do? What should I do? Should I, um, should I just try randomly turning the pot and see if we get anything from that? I don't think we need to adjust anything on this board, but what we can do is if we plug the oscilloscope in, that initial moment during the system boot up where we see the disc spin just for a second, if we check the correct test point on the PCB, we should see if we get any kind of um, activity coming off of the uh, RF RF hot measurement. So, yeah, that might work. But I don't know. I guess we can find out. And ye oldie desk is getting a little bit crowded. In fact, it's getting a little bit crowded around me right now. <laughs> but you never know. Let's try it one last time before messing with the oscilloscope. Sled mood with no problems, but we get that double pulse and then nothing. And then if we switch over to the PlayStation's menus. Apparently we get nothing because I've not plugged the cable in. <clears throat> so then I plug the cable in, turn it off, turn it back on again. and you get the famous sound. Really need to tidy this desk up. Ugh. Right. So there's my scope. Not sure how well that shows, but there she is. Yeah, good enough. So I just need to ground my test probe, which is now done. To show that. There we go. 
we go. Sorry, I didn't switch the camera on because, you know, whoops. <laughs> well, there we go. So there's a the scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the trigger level to edge. We'll put it at about... And we'll set it to... We'll set it to one volts per division. We'll put the horizontal time. We'll put that actually about... Uh, I kind of want it at 500 nanoseconds. I guess 800 should do it. We'll close that auto set menu. The trigger, we'll have it at about 200 or so. Like that. And I think it might be that point that's the test point. So let's find out. No, not seeing anything there. All we're seeing is high there. High there. Yeah. It's not spinning off the disk drive enough to see really anything other than just a high. You know, it's just a high voltage. That's it. I was hoping we'd see a little pulse. But we're not even getting that. Hmm. I'd be curious as to if this drive could actually be fixed. I don't think that it really can. Because I think the diode itself gone. I think the laser diode has gone. And I think what's happening is it's trying to read the table of contents of the disk and it can't do it. So it just doesn't do anything. But I'm surprised I'm not seeing anything at all as it tries to do that. Because we get that initial spin and then nothing. Because what I was hoping to see is, you know, like the peak to peak of the laser breeder, but I can't even see it, so. Alright, what I'm going to do is a bit foolish. What I'm going to do is adjust the potentiometer. Adjust the pot on the CD-ROM drive just slightly. And um, see if that's enough to get it to read anything. It's not even turning. It's not even turning. <laughs> yeah, I reckon diode's gone, but we'll see. You never know. see if that has any effect at all. I don't want to adjust it too much because if I do it could put a bit too much strain on the uh, circuitry that drives the laser. So I'm going to 
just to increment by increment, blindly, basically, and just see if we get any change. Bloody capacitor legs. Yeah, it's a triple five two. You are right. It is. Yeah. Yeah, I think the laser reader's just gone. I think the whole uh, yeah, it's just a laser assembly's gone. Probably the diode. They're not really serviceable though. You just have to swap the whole damn thing out. Look at it. Oh boy, adjustment. Let's give it a YOLO adjustment. Let's go the other way. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's a goner. That's a goner. So that needs a new laser assembly. I don't have any any uh, laser assembly spare for this, so not much I can do about that. Anyway, it's getting a bit late for me. Um, yeah, I've got to look up the previous repair I was working on was a laptop. I need to look up um, external BIOS flashing devices to flash a new BIOS onto the BIOS chip. Uh, which hopefully will bring it back, but it's it's a you know it's a long shot. This just needs a new power supply and it needs a new laser assembly. I'm gonna put the power supply back in its normal rightful place of my own personal PlayStation, rather than in this one. As you can see, my desk is ruinous now. Uh, I did recap a SNES, so that's been done. And that still works, which is also nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of productive, but not as productive as I'd have liked. But there you go. There you go. For you, 1.102K worked. I don't even know what it is at the minute. I've not measured the resistance. I could do a quick measurement. Why not? We'll do a quick one. Let's have a look. <laughs> it's just all over the place. Look at that. <laughs> Hold up. I've got a good example of a CD run right next to me, actually. Let's have a look at... Um See what this one's measuring. I'm measuring the wrong points. Cop shop on Prime, nice. Very nice. I don't know where people are getting killer arms from. Unless they're measuring it from the uh, PlayStation itself. But yeah, I've got a wrecked desk and it's already like driving me crazy. <laughs> so, how to tidy up? 
I got a tidy up. I've not eaten today either, and I'm actually starving. So is that too? Oh no! Come on, come on, oscilloscope. Come on, come on. Oh no! There we go. Right, that had me worried. Get that probe out of the way. Okay, right. Well, as I say, I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it quits here. So I'm gonna wish you all a really uh, a nice chilled out evening. I'll have a good rest of your weekend all. And um, yeah, bye for now. And then until next time, take care all.